Okay, so today I want us to cover uh, at least uh, four topics for day three and uh, day four. Day three, basically, we're going to cover what's called uh, VLAN trunking protocol, the VTP, and you're going to understand how to permit or allow certain VLANs through the trunk interface. And uh, for day four, which uh, which is today. So we, we are going to combine the yesterday's class uh, with today's class and we're going to do it very very fast. Day 4 will be spanning tree protocol and the link aggregation protocol or either channel. Okay. So if I may start uh, with day 3, the VTP, VLAN trunking protocol. Allow me to draw a simple topology. I hope you can see my packet tracer. Yeah. Okay. I always like to uh, explain something with uh, a demonstration when I demonstrate practi practically. That, that's that's helpful. Helpful. Okay. Okay. So I start with the VTP. Basically, VTP is a protocol that, uh, just a minute, VTP is a protocol that allows us to configure VLANs on a one particular, just one switch, and the configuration will be replicated or copied automatically to all other switches. For example, on this topology here, when we want to call, let's say this is one network and we don't want a scenario where we, we configure the same thing to all other three switches. We want to save time. We want to configure only this switch mm -hmm. and all the configuration, we want them to be replicated to all the two switches so that um, we don't, yes? You, you, want, you want to uh, configure all three switches at once. Yes, for VLAN configuration. Only VLAN. This applies to VLAN. That's why we call it VLAN trunking protocol. Yeah. So we don't want to configure even 10 VLANs here. Then we do the same configuration here and do the same configuration here. We just want to do it here once and automatically they will be copied to this switch and this switch. So that that's what we call VLAN trunking protocol. I hope you understand that simple concept. Yeah. Yeah. It, it basically saves time. But, uh, you know, it's uh, it's only used for Cisco devices. It's not standard protocol. But, you know, when okay. you do something, you have to understand even the one that are not uh, the proprietary one. Mm. Okay. So, if I just open the PDF that uh, I always that I prepared earlier. So you can see uh, VTP makes it possible to make configuration changes on one or more switches and have the changes automatically adver advertised to all the switches in the same VTP is, domain. Is that, is that part of this uh, uh, document you sent me? Yes, it's a part of the document that I sent you. Uh, let me check because I printed it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, it's around uh, page 89, something like that. And uh, also, um, you know, I've, as I have said that uh, this applies to only VLANs configuration. So let's say when I configure basic configuration, they won't be copied, only VLANs. Uh, basically, it makes our work easier because, you know, we just do configuration on one switch and uh, it will be replicated or copied automatically to all other switches okay yeah, so for that yes i don't see that um <coughs> you don't see that mm. how many pages do you have on on, on the on your document the end document that you just printed I have uh, not much, but it's a few. 
got like a like a twenty. Something like that. I attempted, know, attempted, I think you have incomplete documents. Uh, the, 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 the last page was networking layers. Oh, two. that's incomplete document. I'll send the complete document. Sorry. Okay, so let's just uh, focus on this at, uh, at the moment. Okay. Yeah. We send that plus two, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. So for this to happen, you know, this don't, doesn't happen uh, by default. We need we need to do some configuration so that uh, that happens, and for that to happen, we have to send these switches certain roles. For example, a switch that will be configured should be called uh, a server. So it will be it will be acting as our server. So and the other switches that will be receiving the configuration automatically are called clients. Mm. Yeah, and these switches should be in the same VTP domain. For that replication to happen, it must be within a particular domain. So for example, uh, when I pen the, uh, the document here, you see the VTP modes. We have client mode, server mode, and transpar transparent mode. Basically, a VTP client cannot change its VLAN configuration. You don't configure anything there. The TP domain is served by the server. It's only there to receive a uh, dynamic configuration from the server, VTP server. So we will only do configuration on the VTP server. But for transparent mode, we can do configuration, but we cannot delete configuration. So we normally use uh, client and server. So on, on this uh, session, I'm just going to focus on the client and server. So for example, when I come to this topology here, switch one will be our uh, VTP server. Switch, two, uh, switch zero and switch two will be our client. So whatever configuration that we'll be doing on switch one will be automatically copied to switch zero and switch two. That's called the VTP VLAN Trunking protocol. It's a protocol that saves time in VLAN configuration. You just do configuration on one switch, and the configuration will be copied automatically to all other switches. And what are you what you have to know that the switches the switches should be in one in the same VTP domain, and uh, also the switches should have a role mods role of uh, VTP server and roles of uh, VTP clients. Okay. So if I can go ahead. Mm. Let me check if I have exhausted the theory behind VTP. Okay. So as I have said, you know, for you, for that to happen, just I have mentioned earlier, but now to a quick, a quick, a quick recap. For that to happen, a switch has to be configured as either VTP server or VTP client. And I have said, I have said that the VTP client server will be that switch that will be doing the configuration. But the VTP client client switch will be that switch that will be doing that will be receiving automatic configuration from the VTP server switch. And uh, the VT number two, the request number two. The, VT the VTP domain name has to be the same on both switches, as I have said. And also, number three, if present, the VTP domain password has to be the same. Same configuration. Number four, a VTP version has to match. Very important. And finally, the link between the switches has to be trunk links. So that's very, very important. Very, very important for for CCNA exam, they normally ask uh, this these proprietary protocols a lot, and I have encountered a lot of them in uh, in exam. So as I have said, VTP will enables us to do conversion very very fast and uh, quickly. And uh, now, okay. <coughs>
So another concept is a uh, villain permit and allow basics. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just a little bit of inconvenience. No, that's okay. Okay. So another another concept that we want, I want us to uh, to check on is a villain permit and allow. As I've said, there's a concept of uh, permitting and allowing certain villains through the trunk interfaces. That's basically is for security purpose, because. Let's say on this switch, we've just defined certain villains that will be passed through this switch. And somebody somewhere doesn't know my villains. So he randomly, he randomly create another villain on this switch, on another switch, and sends traffic to this switch. But being that that villain is not defined in the allowed villain, the traffic will be blocked because the allowed the permit allow villain dictates that when this villain number is received it checks on the rules is it to um, permit it or deny it if it's not if it's not in the permit list then it will be denied so permit allow villain is very very important Perm <coughs> sorry 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 permit Oh, sorry. Permit the nine. It should not be. Permit is the same as allow. Permit the nine. Okay. So as I've said, when we've configured uh, the uh, the number of villains to be permitted through these switches, through this switch, this switch will only permit that list the range of villains that we we just specified if attacker comes with another villain that the villain will not be permitted so it's very very important to uh, specify the number of villains to be permitted through the trunk interfaces okay so step b we are going to vtp and villain permit deny configuration so these two goes hand in hand and that's why I decided to bundle them together. Although in another topic they discuss VTP, VTP first, then they come to uh, villain permit deny. But uh, for this demo purpose, let me, let us just go through them very very fast. Okay. The first configuration that we're going to do here is VTP. We're going to do VTP configuration. Under VTP configuration, what we're going to do, the first thing that we're going to do, <coughs> we're going to identify trunk interfaces and configure them. The next thing that we're going to do we're going to give the switches uh, we're going to configure domain vtp domain name those are steps yes steps the first thing that you do you just configure trunk you identify between this switch and this switch should be trunk then you configure the trunk interfaces then the second step is um um vtp domain name and then optionally op Another option uh, you can configure VTP. Sorry, uh, VTP version. After configuring VTP version, then you have to assign the switch a role VTP VTP mode, whether it will be uh, a server or a client switch. Very important. After that one now, you do VLAN configuration.
on server on VTP server switch and after that one uh, let's uh, say just a minute uh -huh, just a minute let's say uh, uh, we're going to con configure permit allow VLAN on trunk interfaces okay so basically these are the steps that we're going to follow during this session the first thing that we're going to do is to configure VTP configuration VTP configuration they involve several steps as I have listed here then after we have ensured that we've done VTP configuration now we test remember the purpose of VTP is to enable us to configure VLANs in only one switch but those VLANs should be replicated to all other switches that are in the same VTP domain and uh, finally we're going to configure permit or allowed VLAN through the trunk interfaces okay so just a minute um, just um, up okay so as you can see on the previous slide I just used uh, this kind of uh, topology but in my case here I've decided to use uh, this topology here okay so let's do it very very fast I start with this uh, let's say switch 0 is our VTP server or switch 1 no problem I start with switch 1 I you can you can choose either one you can choose any of the switches that you like so long as they are connected the way that I'm connecting them you okay. can choose them so enable config T okay we said that first thing is to configure trunk. trunk interface very important so in our my topology here as you can see i have only connected to two interfaces fa0-1 and fa0-2 in all the switches so very simple interface range fa0-1 to 2 then switch port mode trunk and you hit enter exit the second thing now i move to the second step no the uh yes the, you start with uh interface range i mean interface range then switch ports so it's an interface yes. range then you come with the switch ports mode trunk right yeah so as, as i have said um we only con we only include this command the range command when you want to configure the same parameters to a bundle of uh, interfaces for example we want to configure trunk interface on two interfaces so we don't understand where we go to each interfaces maybe there are 10 interfaces that's uh, you know tedious and uh, cumbersome so what to do we include the range interface range fa 0 1 to 2 configure strength and it's done and now we configure vtp domain so we just say vtp domain to be let's say um test i just want to use cisco because cisco is something you know it's simple and uh, uh nurse i'm using a lower case so i don't want to a scenario where I'm, i'll just be confused about some cases sometimes i write test with the capital t and other switches i write test with the um a small t so for example cisco.com and i hit enter so as you can see changing vtp domain from null to cisco.com so that's very very important okay 
So let's say another thing that we, are, we need to configure here is VTP version. VTP version. VTP va version. Then I query to see which version. Let's use version 2 because you know version 1, version 1, version 2, 2 is the latest. And I hit enter. Okay. Another thing that we need to do, and I forgot, but it's not that. Well, my question was what uh, at that point where you did uh, like uh, the question mark for VTP domain. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So you have to, you you have to when you do v, VTP uh, domain name, question. you have to check, question mark. You have to, you have to put the question mark to check the domain. No, question mark is used to query the next command. For example, you are forgetting the next command. You know, there are couples of commands here, thousands, thousands, and you can't master all of them. So, for example, mm -hmm. if you know, uh, let's say, a part a part of command, and uh, the next command you don't know, you can query. You just use question mark. Mm -hmm. For example, here, VTP domain, then I query. What should I write next? It's telling me a word, meaning now I can write my own word. Okay? And now here... Oh vtp version then i query question mark it's it's telling me use version one or version two mm -hmm. so that's the... so you, you, either either which you want so what so when you put like uh, the uh, the question mark it's it's as if you asking yes which, what which should i write thing? next yeah oh. yeah it's like you are querying you are asking what should i write next yeah, because you know Cisco knows the hierarchy of commands. It knows that we, I mean Cisco iOS knows the hierarchies of command. It knows that when you write VTP version, what follows is a, a number, number one or number two. When you write VTP domain, Cisco iOS knows that that's a hierarchy that follows is like a, a word that you can name something, something like that. So I believe you understand that. Yeah. Okay, so another thing that I wanted to copy, I said that this is optional. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, VTP version is optional? Yeah, it's optional. Mm -hmm. So another another one is password. VTP password is, is also optional. In my configuration, I always use uh, only domain. But it's very, very important... Uh, to include everything because uh, you know when when you're given a practical task and include everything uh, you know you score high okay so also when i come the next thing i do is just uh vtp vtp password to be let's say cisco very simple command and i hit enter setting device database password to cisco very important good so the next step is to assign the vtp mode to this switch i said there are two modes that we can assign in this session although mm -hmm. there are, can you hear me yes although there are three modes but there are two modes that we are going to use the most widely used modes server and client so server is that a VTP? I mean, VTP server is a VTP server switch. Is a switch that will act as uh, VT, I mean, VLANs provider to the VTP client switches. So let's make this one our VTP server. So I'll just do a little bit of. Uh, So this is VTP's client. And then this is VTP server. 
okay so let's assign this switch a role of vtp server we just say vtp uh, vtp mode to you query you can you can see when i wrote vtp let me start let me just start when i'm writing vtp and i ask what should i write next it's telling me you can write just a minute just a minute just a minute when i write that and i query it's telling me you can write domain and domain we just written above we can write a mode and mode we've not written we can write a password password just written and we can write a version so the the question mark will will try to ask the cisco i ask what should we write next so you understand it better right mm -hmm. yeah so we've uh, we've done the three uh password version and domain what we need to do is just to write per mode so when i write mode and query what should i write next it's telling me you can assign this one a, a mode of client client server or transparent yeah but in our case we want to assign this switch here a role of a vtp server so we assign we choose server and we hit enter and um so, i then you choose sorry vtp mod server okay yeah vtp mod server and another Either, so if uh, if we uh yeah like uh, you have two students and you give them the uh, same assignment yeah and uh, i end up by the uh i'm student a and i end up using a client and yeah. the other one uses uh server or transparent is uh, uh will we still have the same results at the end or well uh, you know what i want you to understand is that uh a switch being a server a vtp server client or transparent mode they have uh, different privileges a switch that is configured as a vtp client will only receive vlan configuration it cannot configure vlan but a switch but a switch that is configured as a vtp server will configure vlans and it will send the vlans to all other client switches and you can modify those vlans on a vtp server switch but on a transparent mode transparent mode is similar to server but the difference is that transparent you cannot modify once the vlan configuration are done you cannot modify so it mm -hmm. depends on the question for example when you are student hey you want to make this one to be a server and uh, mm -hmm. student student b can even make this one to be a server or this one but now it be, it is it depends on the style of your configuration you know mm. it's not a big deal yeah as long as you're being told to configure vtp you have to know that uh, vtp modes are there and uh, one switch must be a server and all other remaining switches to be clients all right so as you can see vtp mode server and it's telling me that device mode already vtp server what that what is that uh, meaning that means that by default a switch is in a vtp server mode it can configure uh, vlans it can modify vlans it can delete vlans so that's what is meant here a switch is by default in a vtp server mode all right so that's uh, done we just do right to set the configuration now we'll go to this switch and this one so we do it very very fast and uh, we understand better enable configure terminal the first thing that we say that uh, you enable trunk on this switch two interfaces are connecting to other switches meaning those interfaces should be in trunk mode a phase one and two so i just say interface range a phase zero one to two switch mode mode trunk and i hit enter and exit the interfaces good 
So the next step here is to configure. So, uh, yes. So you, uh, I thought you're doing everything like uh, the VTP configuration for all the, from the clients and from like uh, those switches, other switches is zero, zero, two. Sorry? So are you going to do those uh, VTP configuration in, in on those two other switches? Uh, yes. I've, I oh. said VTP basically allows us to co configure only trunk. I mean only VLANs, VLANs configuration on one switch. And those VLAN configuration on other switch on, on that one switch will be replicated or copied automatically to all other switches. So what we are doing right now is setting up the VTP environment. To set up a VTP environment, you have to enable VTP in every switch. So I'm just enabling VTP on on each switch. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Oh. yeah. So we're just setting a VTP environment to allow that uh, that configuration to happen. So we are enabling VTP on every switch. Mm. So I proceed. So the next thing is um, VTP domain. So VTP domain. Are we done with this switch? It's this switch. So we just say VTP domain to be it was cisco.com just have to be very careful so that domain name be be the same in all the switches okay and optionally we said version of it and the name already set to cisco okay yes domain name next, already next. set to cisco.com uh, then the next will be vtp version um just a minute just a minute already you know this is a cisco switch this case this is a cisco a, uh, cisco okay now it's okay changing vtp domain from this one to this one i was checking on that uh, you know there are always some default configuration that you cannot uh, use reserved let's say reserved words you know but uh a domain name already set to cisco.com okay that's okay. Now we configure version, VTP version. Uh, we used version 2. Uh, VTP mode already in version 2. That's okay. Then we configure uh, VTP password. VTP password to be, we use Cisco. Okay. Setting database, that one. Okay, that's okay. And now VTP mode. VTP mode to be client. Because we want there can be let's say there's only one server at uh, at one point at this how can i say this there can only be one server in a vtp domain and mm -hmm. all of the uh, switches should be in a client mode so only one vtp server switch all of the switches vtp client switches so let me uh, only once the uh which can be uh, a VTP, VTP server, yes. VLAN tracking protocol server, VTP server. And if I can just do a little bit of uh, show comma, do show VTP status. Okay, as you can see, do show VTP status. You can see VTP version is uh, capable of doing version two, version one to version two, version running is version two, version two. And VTP, um, uh, VTP domain name is cisco.com. Uh, we've not done a pruning mode or trap generation. Okay. And you can see VTP operation operating mode is client. Okay. Now, but now when I go back to this switch, the server switch, and do, do show VTP uh, status. You can see that uh, uh, it's running version 2 and uh, the domain is the domain name is cisco.com and also uh, VTP operating mode is server which is very very important here okay mm -hmm. so finally let's go to this switch here I click on the switch enable 
configure terminal. The first thing that we do, trunk interface. FS one and two. Interface range FS zero slash one to two. Switchboard mode trunk one. Yeah. Exit. So that you can return to the configure global configuration mode. Okay, so the next thing we configure domain name VTP domain name to be cisco.com domain to be cisco.com cisco.com okay then vtp vtp version to be version 2 then also vtp password to be cisco okay then finally we said that uh, yeah, but you, you mean uh, uh the vtp password and the version are optional right yes the only thing that are mandatory here that you must configure a vtp domain and a vtp mode and you have to identify the trunk interfaces and configure them make sure that okay. you, you configure the mode, the, mode, the mode you're talking is this one either server or client for the rest yes so okay. in our case we'll be using a vtp mode of server and client we will, we will not be using transpa transparent there are three more modes server client transparent and i have uh, explained uh, about them all right so if we may proceed we need to configure it as a vtp client vtp mode to be client and i hit enter exit and write okay so show vtp status you can see it's running version 2 a domain name is the same and uh, operating mode is a uh, client okay all right so it's a it's a it's a time to go for step two We've done step one, which was to set up a VTP environment, virtual trunking environment, virtual trunking protocol environment, so that when we are going to configure uh, VLANs here, the configurations will be automatically copied or replicated to these two switches. As per now, let's do this do show vlan you can see the only villains that are here are the default one vlan one and this one the reserved one those one and also when i come to the this client again show vlan you can see vlan one and the the default this is the reserved vlans okay and also when I come to the server switch, do show VLAN. You can see it's the same. We've not configured VLANs. But I said VTP will allow me to configure the VLANs in only this one switch. But the VLANs that I've configured will be copied to all the other switches. So let's begin. I want to call, I want to create, uh, let's say, um, six, six VLANs. VLAN, let's say VLAN 10, name IT, VLAN 20, uh, name, uh, Allah. name Char, Rip. yeah, then uh, VLAN 30, uh, name CS, okay. CS okay. okay, no problem, uh, then uh, VLAN uh, Milan 40, let's say finance. Um, then uh, Milan um, 50, let's say uh, customer service. And oh, we will see. see it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. Milan 50. Uh, we can just say guest. 
mm -hmm. and uh, finally VLAN 60 we can do um, uh, legal LG legal ah, sorry name name legal and I hit enter exit and do oh, I have a question uh, from uh, the last assignment yes if um, the, I have uh, wrongly put uh, you told me like an assignment to do three or three uh, villain and uh, by mistake I, uh, I made four yeah and it's possible to delete a villain yes so you know uh, do in this in this by doing a no villain yes no villain let's say you you wrongly configured villain 40 you just say yeah. no villain 40 and, and that's all and that's all it will undo the configuration okay. so let's if i can just say do show villain you can see here we have uh, uh 60 i mean 10 20 30 40 50 60 villains although they have not been assigned interfaces okay for example hmm, let's say i want to delete um, vlan 60. i can just say no vlan 60. and if i can just do show vlan you can now see there's no vlan 60 here okay and how to modify vlan also before i proceed to the other switches how can we modify vlan mm -hmm. for example we want to modify vlan 50. you know so let's say in assignment we were told to write uh, it as guest but uh, uh mistakenly i forgot s let's say uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the case like, like yesterday uh, on, on my assignment because yeah. yeah. I, I had to to, to, to write uh, the um name them like uh, uh hr okay uh, sp and uh, cs and uh, so and uh b before i saw these uh requirements yeah. i have already named you uh on my own way okay. so and uh, i have thinking how will i be able to to delete or to edit it. okay now this is how to modify it so let's say let mm -hmm. me create another let's say just villain 60 villain 60 and the name uh, let's say uh, we were told to name is uh, as legal legal department i have uh, let's say lee let's say i'm now forgetting a there intentionally exit mm -hmm. and do show villain so when i read uh, do show villain i now realize that i wrongly type legal so how do i modify it we just come here and uh, make sure that uh, this is villain villain 60 just say villain 60 and now just give the name the right name just rename it again just that way there's no big deal about it oh, oh there there will not, not be two villain yeah 60. yeah there will not be two villain you know when you when you write this villain 60 and it's already there mm. and now you try to name it again now this name will override this one the, the first, first one. one yeah so if i just say do show villa now you can see it's legal just name it again when you do the wrong thing you just name it again okay yeah okay so as you can see i have uh, configured 66 villa i mean six six villains here and as i have said those villains should be replicated to all the two switches automatically so if i go to these villains i mean to these switches remember the first time i said do show villain nothing popped up there were only default villains here but now if i can <coughs> if i can just uh, retype that villain do just do that you can see the villains that i've configured on that switch has come on switch zero can you now see them mm. yeah so similarly when i go to this switch remember we didn't configure any villains here 
and the first sure yeah so if i can right type uh, this show villain this command the first time i did it nothing was here just the default villain mm. sorry i just retype it and hit enter you can see all the villains are here so vtp but villain tracking protocol is a protocol that enables us to configure villains on only one switch and the configuration will be automatically copied to all other switches and what you have to know that we have to configure domain we have to configure vtp domain version domain. password and the mode oh. <clears throat> yes it's very very important concept for example you know in a uh, even in a in a campus network let's say in uh, at the campus uh, students hostels there are a lot of uh, routers there let's say uh, even six routers and you want to configure the same villains in all the routers you you want to be working from one router to another you have to do configuration on, on only one route so, sorry switch on only one switch and the configuration will be copied automatically to all other five switches so that's the concept of vtp configuration VLAN trunking protocol so i believe you've understood how to configure vtp here are the steps very simple yeah. and i have explained it uh, explicitly all right so if we can go back to that like for for for, for, for this part, part we 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 done, done with vtp configuration the vlan configuration and the permit and the low vlan and trunk interfaces is the same like a, that is uh when we are verifying so i don't i did that for this point yeah. how do you, you do that because i saw how we did the vtp configuration and the vt vlan configuration but the permit and the low vlan okay. on the front <laughs> that's what i'm is that that's what i'm going to right now oh, Th that's okay. a very okay. important concept that i cannot uh, uh omit right in in this configuration okay. that's what i was going to right now right. villain permit and deny configuration right. so you know uh here now here what you're just going to do this is our server and all the villains are configured here meaning this switch here these two vtp switches are receiving configuration from this vtp server mm -hmm. so if you want to permit the permit uh, villains that should be should be going to these switches we are going to do it mm -hmm. here when we are configuring vtp but in case we were not configuring vtp we could have done it okay okay so as i've said um we need to permit um uh, i keep forgetting this thing permit deny permit is there is is the same as equal okay it's the same as allow okay all right so i just go to this switch okay So I'll just give simple steps here also. You enter trunk interface. Uh, just identify trunk. Identify trunk interfaces. Then configure them. configure trunk and allow or deny vlans these are the only three steps under permit deny vlan on trunk interfaces so when you go to this uh, switch here we are going to the first thing we're going to identify trunk interface it's this one and this one then we're going to configure them 
and they have already been configured as trunk. So what step are we going to do? Allow or deny VLANs. So let's go. To allow or deny VLAN, we enter the trunk interfaces. Interface range, it was FA0, FA0-1 to 2. The first thing, you enter the trunk interfaces. And we add two trunk interfaces. So we use range. Now we same thing. Yes. Same, same thing thing like when we do with the call configuration. Yes, yes, yes. Now after you've entered the two interfaces, you okay. configure trunk, but they have already been configured. So we skip to uh, the third step. Allow or deny. How do we do it? So start, let's start with allow. By default, all the villains are allowed through the trunk interface. <coughs> yeah, sorry. <coughs> By default, all the villains are allowed through the trunk interface. So it's upon us to identify the uh, the good traffic, the, I mean the favorable VLANs that you need to be allowed the trunk, the, the trunk interface, I mean. So for example, in this case, in this case we have uh, six VLANs. Six VLANs. Before that, just, just for a demo, just for a demo, I want to create another VLAN. Let's say VLAN uh, 110. Name. Aka. So let's say villain 10 will be the Aka's villain. Do show villain. It's here. So let's check it it's on the other switches. For example, this switch. The Aka is not here. So if I can do it, do show villain. Now Aka is here. On the other switch. It's here. Okay. So we want to deny that villain. Let's say we don't know that villain. We don't know it. Let's say we just we we don't know that villain. So we want to allow only the villains that we've just configured. Anything that we didn't configure should be blocked. So let's assume the aka villain we never configured it maybe it was configured by malicious users so only the configured villains should be allowed mm -hmm. and as i have said by default all the villains are allowed through the trunk interface and that's why you can see the hacker here on the on switcher 2 and on switcher okay. 0. Can, Can you repeat, repeat that, that by default, default all, all VLANs? All the VLANs are allowed mm -hmm. through the trunk interface. All of them by default. Mm. Yeah. So it's upon you. For security purpose, you should only allow the VLANs that you've just configured. Anything that you didn't configure, don't allow it to the trunk interface. But by mm -hmm. default, it's allowed. So let's allow only the uh, the, the villain, villain we, we yeah. created yes good so I said how to do that you identify trunk interface you configure trunk and allow or deny so for example our trunk interface was interface range a phase 0 slash 1 to 2 you configure them as trunk. They are already in trunks. So we move to step three, which is allow or deny. But in our case, let's only an allow the one that we just created. Switch port. Just write switch port. Trunk. Allowed VLANs. Very simple command. Let me delete it. Uh, switch port. Trunk. Then when I query, what should I write next? allowed then when i query it again vlans okay so we just we've just created a vlan 10 comma vlan 20 
comma villain 30 comma villain 40 comma villain 50 and villain 60 and i hit enter just one command just one command switch port trunk allowed villains only villain 10 20 30 40 and 50 okay okay so exit exit so i want us to test the configuration remember the first time bef before we allowed vlan on the clan switches i mean on the server switches the hacker was here but now we have uh, allowed certain vlans the only ones that we created these ones so we want to check if the archive is still here let me just do it sorry the hacker is still here just a minute uh, oh, just a minute do show villain okay i know where i went wrong so i'll just confirm uh, with my configuration uh, i said that by default all the villains are allowed what i didn't do is just to uh, deny the one that uh, should not be allowed through the trunk interface so i think that's where i went wrong and if I can just uh, come, I can just uh, check on here. Uh -huh. Okay, so these these are the commands that we can use there. You know, there are lots of commands that we can use. The first command that we can use, you enter the trunk interface, then you say. Switch port trunk allowed villain 150, allow only villain 150. Then switch port tr trunk allowed villain hall, allow all villain. Switch port trunk allowed villain none, don't allow any. Switch port trunk allowed villain one, that one, that one, that one. Uh, okay. Then switch port trunk allowed villain except oh, that one. Okay. So what I didn't do. It just to write uh, accept I think that's where I went wrong here so let's uh, repeat it hit enter and um, accept uh -huh. just write villain accept 110 the one that we didn't create although exit I just want to try because uh, the problem with, mm, is with VTP. You know, VTP is trying to copy everything that we did to all other switches. So I just want to check if that can happen also. It's still persistent. I think the problem is VTP. But when we do it uh, on a normal, uh, in a normal uh, environment without VTP, everything will work. Everything is going to work here. It's only that we configured VTP. The problem is VTP. Because VTP, everyth everything you configure on a, on a, a VTP server switch should be copied to all other switches, which are clients. So for a permit deny on a trunk interface, I think we'll just keep that one for a moment as i check uh, much about it if it's compatible with the vtp i said you know vtp is a cisco proprietary domain but uh, permit deny is a something standard so i don't know if the proprietary protocol is uh, compatible with the the standard one okay okay yeah so uh, i think we just keep that on for a moment okay. okay but that's how it's done that's how it's done and i'll just send you this uh, this documentation and we'll check on them and uh, simulate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So if I can, I think uh, 
before we can we can understand uh, what we mean by spanning tree protocol and uh, either channel if you can have any question or any doubt you can ask uh, about vtp and permit deny uh, VLANs. you can just ask because i think uh, i've just shown you how to configure them here so that, so that means for, for these uh, uh, permits and deny villain on trunk, trunk you see, see it, it we, we are you gonna be uh, uh explaining me more, more about this next time or that's, that's all. all well uh, just a minute i think we need to i'll just uh what i'll do i'll uh, i'll draw another topology without vtp so that we can do it there <laughs> yes that's so, so far this is how, how you do for permit deny Oh, oh, I mean, the permit of the is the same, same state? state? Yes. So to test that, to test that, I was forgetting. Mm -hmm. I was forgetting. Let's test okay, this. Okay. Let's test. Let's just test that. Let, remember, I've just uh, excluded uh, villain one hundred one ten. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I'll just test with PCs. So I'll put um, there's something that I forgot to explain, but now I want to explain it when I'm, I'm doing the simulation. Just a minute. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I want to undo these commands. I want to remove all of them. This one for the oh. uh, for the permit uh, deny a configuration. Mm -hmm. Then we test something. Then I configure them again. Then we test again. Then you will understand what I, I mean. I've just remembered how it's done. Okay. okay. Yeah. So interface range. So some su suppose you want to undo commands uh, that you've done wrongly. For example, I did this one, and now I want to remove it. You just copy, you just highlight that way, then you click on here, copy. Copy, and you come, and you paste, you click on paste. Okay, now you uh, click on the arrow left, until the start of that thing, then you say no, space, and you hit enter. Now that has been removed, and then I come again and remove this one that I configured. I copy and paste. I move to the left and say no, and I hit enter. Exit and do right. Okay. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to assign this PC and this PC and this PC to VLAN 110. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I repeat, I repeat that. that. I want to send this PC, PC1, PC3, and PC4 to VLAN 110, the hacker, uh, let's say to the hacker VLAN, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I send IP address to them and try to ping. Then after they are pinged, I'll configure allowed and denied villains and try to ping again can you hear me now mm. yes yes okay mm -hmm. these are not even important
Okay. So what I'll do, I'll just try to configure a pure dice here first. Okay, so I've sent them my peer address, but what I've not done, I want to send them to villain 199, all of them, and try to communicate. PC1, PC3, and PC4. So PC1 here is connected to FA0-3. So I just say, interface, FA0-3, then switch port mode. Can you remember? So access. So access. Yes. Then switch port, access, VLAN access. 110. Uh, VLAN 10. Yes. Exit and do right. Then I come here again. This is FA0-4. I'll just say int uh, config t. Interface, FA0-4. Then you say switch port... Um, mode access then switch port access vlan 110 exit and do right then we come finally to this uh, uh this uh switch here fa uh, uh interface fa 0 3 switch port mode access mode access then switch port access VLAN 110. Exit and do right. As you can remember, we said that devices in the same VLAN will communicate. But devices in, in the different VLANs will not communicate by default. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So remember PC1, PC1 and PC3 are in the same VLAN, even with PC4. So they should be able to communicate. So this is a uh, uh, one and two. Uh, another question which comes on my mind, like uh, yesterday when I was configuring uh, the uh, IP address. Yeah. Uh, that means every PC needs to have its own IP address. Yes, a unique IP address. Oh, oh, so, so, so yesterday, yesterday when I was doing the assignment, that I realized that because on my understanding, I thought when the PC on some VLAN can share the same IP no, 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 no. address. When I was trying to pull them yeah. and uh, they, they were saying it's already uh, saved or used, so I, I started like realizing. Yeah. So you know that every IP we have to I, have its own IP address, address. IP address is like a phone number. You know, two 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 people cannot have the same phone number. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's it. So I'm going to try to ping from this PC. This said uh, uh one and two one six eight one dot ten. This was uh, one one dot thirty and one dot twenty. So let's try to ping. I go to this PC. I come to CMD and ping one and two dot one sixty eight dot um, one dot twenty. You can see it's pinging. Then also I try to ping one dot thirty. One dot thirty. You can see it's pinging. Good. So I want to test. I want to configure what I was telling you. Deny or permit VLANs. So let's do it. I'll do it on this switch. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I said, you enter the trunk interfaces. The trunk interfaces on this switch are the two. FA0-1 and FA0-2. 
So we enter the two trunk interfaces, which are which is a F interface range. A phase zero slash uh, one to two. Okay. Then switch port trunk allowed VLAN to be only ten twenty thirty uh, forty 50 and 60 we are not including VLAN 110 here and I hit enter sorry 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 switchboard trunk allowed VLAN should there should be VLAN here and I hit enter so I want to try again if we can ping So this is um, uh, uh, one dot twenty. So I'll, I'll try to ping one dot ten and one dot thirty. Ping one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot ten. Can you see now? It's not pinging. Yeah. It's not pinging because oh. that villain is not allowed. Yeah. It's not allowed uh, through the trunk. Oh. Yeah, so I was mistaking uh, VTP for nothing. I just forgot to what, what that was meant for. And also, if I try to ping uh, one dot two, one dot thirty, I mean, because this was one dot twenty, one dot thirty, you can see it's the same thing. And okay. now, if I go back to this switch yeah. and remove this command here. It will ping. Um, just a minute. So let me see if uh, it has not ping until now. So I'll go to the same switch and disable the command again and demonstrate. It will ping the same IP address that is it has refused to ping. So I'll just say no to this no to this command so let's test it again now let's test it again now it's pinging can you see hello yeah 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 so that's that's the concept of uh, um deny or allowed villain and now if we enable it again and hit enter then we come back to the same computer and ping the same IP address that has just been uh, successful. Remember this IP address has been successful? When I try it again and now, it won't ping. So that's the concept of uh, deny allowed VLAN. Very important for security purpose. So if you assume that the account had the VLAN 110, VLAN 110 is kicked out by default because it's not in the allowed list. <coughs> So in the in this concept, the switch is using allowed list to forward uh, VLAN traffic. The switch will only forward VLAN uh, traffic matching those six VLANs: 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Only that. It's about forwarding traffic. Although you know the Although for VTP, all the villains should be copied, but the villains won't be able to communicate. The allowed villain is for communication purpose. Papa. But um, the allowed the VTP Papa. is used to copy the villain configuration to the client switches automatically. Okay, now I believe you understand that part. Mm, okay. Okay, so do you have any question concerning uh, this uh, part? 
Uh, this part, I I will review the video for but for the first like uh, for permitting the deny. Yeah. Uh, so you 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 need to have uh, those pieces and uh, then from those pieces you have to allow uh, from the VTP uh, server. Yeah. And. It's just it for okay. testing communication. You know, for this, it's not carried by the VTP. For the loud uh, and uh, the deny list, it's not carried by the VTP. VTP is only carry, mm -hmm. carrying the VLAN configuration. So for this one, you will have to configure it in all the switches. So for example, oh, uh, oh. yes, it's not carried. You know, we were not, we were not conferring these switches because all the configuration the villain configuration were carried by the vtp but now for the loud villain they are not carried by the vtp so we need to enable them here also so for example interface uh, range fa0 slash one to two then uh, switch port trunk allowed villain to be 10 comma 20 30 40 50 and 60 and uh, do right then we come to this switch also we do the same configuration vtp is only carrying um vlan configuration fa0 one to two then switch port trunk allowed vlan to be 10 20, uh, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And do right. As you can see here, all these pieces, the test pieces, are in VLAN 110. And the first time, we try to ping uh, 1.30 and 1.20. All were successful. So if I try to ping again, nothing will happen. Because the villains the villain that those computers have him is not in the loud list now if it's not in the loud list it's in the denied list so that's the concept of allow deny if it's not in the loud list it's in the denied list but what's very important you have to go through this documentation and uh, explore how to do it in several ways you can only allow one villain at a time. You can only allow all. You can also allow all villains at a time, and um, you can no, you can deny all villains at a time, and uh, a list of villains, and also all villains except only one villain. So that's a concept of allowed villains. So I believe you have understood um, uh, that part. And it's like uh, your two hours is uh, <laughs> as co is coming to an end.